A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the 51st edition of the Global Weather and Climate, your weekly tour and look back at the week of extremes that has taken place around the planet. Before we get into the video, please like, share and of course subscribe. I'm continuing to approach the 5,000 subscriber mark, um, well, give or take 150, but uh, I would greatly appreciate your support by hitting the big red button, of course. Like the video, uh, let uh, YouTube know that you're enjoying the content, and of course, let myself know that you're enjoying the content in the comments section below. I do greatly appreciate that. So this is the past 60 days. This is the two meter temperature normally around the planet. Of course, there is a lot of extremes taking place around the world at this moment in time. There's a lot of heat in the atmosphere, but there is areas of the world that is seeing below average conditions as well. But it is running well above average from a global point of view. And I think uh, the very warm compared to average temperatures in Antarctica is certainly helping jack up the global average temperature. That's for sure. So uh, I always strive, of course, to deliver a fairly unbiased opinion when, when it comes to climate as well. I have shared my thoughts during the course of the past week with regards to the heat wave taking place, mainly through the Mediterranean basin. It's not really a continental um, heat wave. That's one thing I would want to point out, that uh, you know the entire continent of Europe is certainly not uh, above average in fact there's over 50 percent of the european continent that is below average but of course the bbc sky you know various media sources are only focusing on the areas that are seeing extreme heat indeed it is very hot there's no getting away from that and also the wildfire situation that is ongoing in places such as roads mainland greece turkey where we're seeing temperatures um, at or near record breaking levels for any time of the year. But like I say, there is always areas that are below average when you've got extreme heat, you've also got unusual cool in other parts. And the UK and Ireland is certainly victim of those below average conditions. Wetter than average, below average temperatures is certainly going to be uh, the thing to take home from the July 2023 month. A big contrast, of course, to June 2023, which um, as per the Met Office, it was the warmest on record. And I get the, you know, a lot of people, especially on this channel, um, you know, I would go as far as to say, based on the comments, at least, there is a lot of people that would lean more towards the natural cyclical aspect to the weather and of course weather and climate is quite often mixed up and confused uh, of course weather over a 30-year period is classified of course as a climatic trend and we have been warming up over recent years there's no doubt about that here when you look at the sea surface temperature anomalies here from back at 1982 so this is off weatherbell.com and it's something i don't often show very very difficult to see I, I, I appreciate that i'm going to try and see actually if i can get these charts a little bit bigger because it's very very hard to see unfortunately but if we look back at 1982 and you can see here that the temperature was naturally a good deal colder so this is sea surface temperature anomalies by the way and you can see here the difference between 1982 at the top versus 2023 at the bottom. Now, this is a genuine, very significant rise in global sea surface temperature. And of course, we are seeing the reflection taking place on the land masses here. And of course, the big golden question is, why are we seeing this very strong warming of the sea surface temperatures from the early 1980s? to 2023 uh, is it na natural is it man-made uh, but there's no getting away from the fact that the planet has significantly warmed up each super el nino we reach a new benchmark we've seen that in 2020 2015 um with the super el nino we are seeing an el nino this year it'll be interesting to see exactly how much heat that pumps into the atmosphere and then of course we'll see uh, you know the temperatures respond to that but, um, you know, how strong the El Nino gets is going to be the golden question. What impact we see during the winter season will also be very interesting also. 
And uh, yeah, um, you know, the, the sea surface temperatures are certainly very warm compared to average at the moment. Now, this is of uh, NOAA, and it's interesting how strong these reds are, uh, you know, running five Celsius above average with the darkest reds. You notice, of course, we've seen, and this has been highlighted in the channel during the course of the week. We did uh, look on Friday at some of my winter thoughts. If you haven't already done so, please do check that out. But you can see here the strong warming over the North Pacific and the North Atlantic here. There's the El Nino, of course, continuing to develop. The IOD has not went positive as expected. It's still at a neutral state. And it's interesting to see the effect that we are seeing over Australia, over parts of India, where the monsoon season is, is definitely strong this year versus what was expected to be a weaker El Nino because of the El Nino developing, sorry, a weaker monsoon because of the development of the El Nino. Also, the IOD was meant to be positive, but it looks as if that's failed. And uh, this is having an impact on weather, not just in the Southern Hemisphere, but also the Northern Hemisphere here. And the strongest warmth was, um, you know, instead of it being over the Western portion of the North Atlantic, it was actually over the East. Now we've seen that shift uh, westwards. And we've seen some extreme weather. We've seen some flash flooding in parts of the Canadian Maritimes and a lot of the influence being not only in the atmosphere, but also the response to this very warm waters. And we're also seeing temperatures near 32 Celsius in the waters surrounding Italy where the ongoing heat wave is, is taking place. But if you notice this chart versus this one, now this is looking at the 1981 to 2010 data set. And you can see here that the you know it is quite different looking. So this is the problem that we've got is we've got different data sets, whether it be the past 30 years or the previous before that, the, the previous 30 year period. And of course, with a warming trend in the last, you know, 30 plus years, the average uh, each every 30 years is going to be higher than the previous. And then there's a little bit of a picking and choosing. And I try my best not to fall victim of that. It's not deliberate. But I try my best not to fall victim of that myself by showing you charts that they, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I try not to have any agenda. I'm trying to show you, you know, uh, the most unbiased opinion in terms of weather and indeed climate. But this is a very different looking sea surface temperature anomaly profile versus this one that we see off, uh, off uh, NOAA. So that is quite interesting to see. But you can see here, cool, warm. And we'll look at the sea surface temperatures as we go through the autumn season as well. Of course, we still have the month of August. And that August forecast will be released on my website, by the way, this upcoming week. So I do encourage you to stay tuned for that. And indeed, continue to subscribe to the channel here because I'm going to be looking more, uh, of course, at the August forecast. Look back what June and July has been versus the forecast and reality. I think it's been a very, very good June, July, certainly in terms of my forecast. Let's see what happens during the month of, of August. We'll look at, the, of course, the winter season more and more as we're pressed into the autumn season, of course, uh, September through November. Uh, we'll see what type of pattern we have that may have impacts on the winter down the road. Even the month of July with a negative NAO, by the way, could um, actually repeat itself later down the road here. So we'll need to watch that as well. This is the past uh, 60 days, according to the CDAS data here. And we'll try and get a bigger chart here for you to look at to make it a little bit clearer, even though it's not very clear indeed. Get back to the right chart. You can see here over the last 60 days, so this is really over the last two months, this is the, the temperature anomalies around the planet. Cool and average uh, for the majority of Alaska, very warm compared to average over northern Canada, where we've seen record-breaking uh, hot temperatures here. Cool across Western Greenland versus the East. Of course, the UK, Europe overall has been warmer than average over the last six days. Northern India, very, very heavy rainfall here. So that's been keeping temperatures cool and average. Equatorial Africa below average. Western Australia has been cold compared to average versus a warmer East. We've seen some record breaking temperatures in New South Wales. We'll get to that in a second. East, far Eastern Russia above average. Central Russia below average slightly. Warmer than average further west. We've had a warmer than average Kazakhstan versus a colder than average Mongolia. You know, look at China. There's been a lot of talk about the heat in China, but southwestern China has been 
firmly below average for the last 60 days. Even central China is not overly warm compared to average. It's really been that eastern side of the country. Vast country, of course, at that. But it has been slightly warmer than average in the east, as you can see here. And it's kind of slightly warmer than average across the Sahara Desert. You would expect it to be hot at this time of the year. Of course, it's one of the hottest regions on the planet at this time of the year, as per the Middle East, of course. So you get the overall idea. Uh, South America has been firmly warmer than average, but that is definitely a reflection of that day, uh, that um, ongoing El Nino development, of course. What a car stark contrast between the month of June and the month of July over Europe, and particularly so over the UK and Ireland. We've almost had one of the most dramatic flip arounds in the upper pattern probably anywhere in the northern hemisphere between june and july and this is exactly what was forecast i can't quite believe myself actually how good this has ended up being where we've had of course the strong block this is the chart to the left this is the 500 millibar anomalies sent to me by richard trot our good friend but down in the down in yorkshire um, I do greatly appreciate Richard uh, and his contribution and his thoughts as well. But uh, very strong region over the UK and Ireland, hence we had very dry conditions, very warm conditions during uh, June. Then we had a complete and utter flip around during the month of July. So the deepest negative pretty much anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere has been centred just to the west of the UK and Ireland here. And that has kept us firmly cool and indeed wetter than average for the month of July. And like I say, this is going to wind up a cooler than average July. And I really struggled with July because of those warm sea surface temperatures. I had a hard time putting myself out there and suggesting a below average July. I said a near average July, despite having low pressure and control. Of course, a warmer than average sea surface temperatures, low pressure. Yes, days are, are kept cooler than average, but nighttime temperatures tend to stay quite warm because of the cloud cover and the added humidity, thanks to those warmer than average sea surface temperatures. So let's have a look and see what's been going on around the world before I run out of time as usual. By the way, this is the uh, temperature anomalies. This is the GFS, I believe, the ensemble, the 850 temperatures for London. You can see here that we're near average at the moment. Then we go firmly below average for the final days of the month of July. And then really, we have a huge spread as we push into week one of August. According to this chart, you can take your pick. It could be 18 Celsius at 850 or it could be 2 Celsius at 850. Very, very tough call when it comes to the month of um, August and particularly early August. So let's get into the 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 details in terms of the extremes that have taken place around the planet over the past seven days or so here. The volcanic eruption in Guatemala, of course, we've seen some interest in high latitude eruptions in recent times. Uh, extreme weather, contrast between Atlantic air versus very hot continental air, massive storms erupting in that ring of fire, that uh, separation zone between the hot and cold. We've seen massive hail We've seen heavy flood and rainfall. This is China, Shanghai to be specific. We've had tremendous uh, flooding across northern and western portions of India. Gujarat and Rajasthan province in particular has been hammered by heavy monsoon rain. Uh, this is the scene in parts of Italy where we've had actual tornadoes taking place. Look at this here. Incredible tornado ripping through this community in Italy. And that is a direct result of a clash between extreme heat and extreme, uh, cooler conditions. Forest fires, of course, tourists evacuated out of roads. Major fires, of course, a very, very vegetated um, region, of course. Tinderbox conditions will have very heavy rainfall, of course, earlier in the, the summer season. This was the scene in parts of China as well. Very heavy rainfall in parts of the Canadian Maritimes, actually. Major flooding, record rate in rainfall here. Record heat, the highest temperature in the whole of Canada. Lytton, 39.4 Celsius. I'm unfortunately going to run out of time. Temperatures near 48 in the western portions of Turkey. Uh, Iran, um, 50 plus, very warm nights. And it looks as if 
We had a temperature of uh, just on shy of 48 Celsius in Italy.